Dzień dobry, nazywam się Anna Dupont i jestem jedną z kuratorek festiwalu Digital Cultures. Pandemia zmieniła nasze postrzeganie cielesności, fizyczności i świata materialnego wokół nas. Dystans społeczny, pojęcie kiedyś zarezerwowane dla badaczy społeczeństw, e, wszedł w język codzienny całych społeczeństw. W dzisiejszej sekcji Best of Poland zobaczymy projekty, które odnoszą się do fizyczności. Miastofon przedstawia fizyczną przestrzeń miasta, przefiltrowaną przez cielesność i cyfrowe doświadczenie. Warszawski TR opowie o tym, w jaki sposób tworzyć teatr poza teatrem. Scrolling to Zero to kompozycja na organy i ludzki organizm. Fab Fungus eksploruje przyszłość ludzkości, zastanawiając się nad przełożeniem świata algorytmicznego na materialny. Zapraszamy w imieniu Digital Cultures cyfrowo na blog Best of Poland o fizyczności. Dzień dobry, nazywam się Agata Ruchlewicz-Dzianak, jestem częścią Laboratorium Miejskiego Gruby Punkt z Gdańska. Interesują nas niematerialne warstwy miasta, skupiamy się na subiektywnej i emocjonalnej percepcji przestrzeni i staramy się włączyć w dialog osoby z grup wykluczonych na co dzień z takiej rozmowy. Zaprezentuję projekt Miastofon, który jest czysto akustyczną, interaktywną mapą online przedstawiającą dzielnicę Nowy Port w Gdańsku. Jest to projekt, który skupia się tylko i wyłącznie na dźwięku. Wszystkie aspekty wizualne zostały wyeliminowane. Także mapa jest niewidoczna, kursor jest niewidoczny, w efekcie mamy czarny ekran. Dźwięki aktywowane są poprzez przesuwanie niewidocznego kursora po niewidocznej mapie. Użytkownicy przemieszczają się po przestrzeni miejskiej, po cyfrowej mapie tylko i wyłącznie słuchając. Na mapie dźwięki nie są ułożone punktowo, tylko tworzą ciągłą przestrzeń, także jest, umożliwiona, jest umożliwione płynne dryfowanie po mapie i takie odczucie pełne, pełne przestrzeni. Co ważne, jest to projekt partycypacyjny. E, uczestnikami e, projektu są osoby niewidome i niedowidzące e, z warsztatów terapii zajęciowej e, w Gdańsku e, i projekt jest rezultatem warsztatów dźwiękowo-psychogeograficznych e, właśnie w Łaźni e, w Nowym Porcie. Na mapie obok nagrań terenowych, tak zwanego field recordingu, które z założenia są nagraniami bezosobowymi, zostały osadzone także nagrania dźwięków, głosów osób na temat ich subiektywnych odczuć i emocji związanych z tą, z tą przestrzenią. Nagrania zostały zrealizowane podczas spacerów po dzielnicy. Równocześnie część warsztatów odbywała się wewnątrz galerii i 
tam trochę eksperymentowaliśmy, badaliśmy fonowarstwy i szukaliśmy różnych sposobów i metod na opowiadanie o dźwiękach i też dźwiękami. Były to na przykład dyskusje z użyciem dźwięków, z wykorzystaniem przedmiotów znalezionych w, podczas spacerów na dzielnicy, czy kalambury dźwiękowe, albo na przykład materializacja dźwięków w postaci form 3D. Tutaj na przykład za pomocą plasteliny po jednej stronie przedstawione są dźwięki kroków przechodniów na ulicy, z drugiej strony zdekonstruowane i rozłożone na czynniki pierwsze jest dźwięk pociągu, który przejeżdża przez las. To, co ważne dla nas było, to uczestnictwo osób niewidomych na każdym etapie tworzenia cyfrowego projektu. Zbieraliśmy relacje, odczucia, badaliśmy opinie i na tej podstawie była konstruowana cała siatka i całe założenie cyfrowego projektu. Także w efekcie powstała przestrzeń cyfrowa z przestrzenią dźwiękową w taki sposób, jak orientują się osoby niewidome po niej, dla osób widzących stanowiąca wyzwanie. To, co nas zaciekawiło i zainteresowało w tym projekcie, to w kontekście współczesnego problemu deficytu uwagi przy bogactwie multimediów i mnogości form przekazu, które na co dzień do nas docierają, to fakt, że możemy ograniczyć ten multimedialny przekaz, skupić się tylko na jednomodalnym interfejsie i w ten sposób skupić się i wyłuskać jeden aspekt i ta estetyczność formy pozwala nam skupić się na jednej, na jednej rzeczy, w tym przypadku na, na zmyśle słuchu w percepcji przestrzeni. I w tym momencie chciałabym zaprosić na, na próbkę projektu. No taki szmer słychać i to jest takie chrupowate. Co to za pasy? Co to jest? Ale śmieszne, i tu takie liście? To was mi. Wydaje, że to też jest statek, że to są statki. Być może silnik ja pracował w statku. I coś gdzieś, jakby coś tu, jakby coś gdzieś coś, coś robił. Przetoczywali coś czy coś, takie stuki takie, takie, takie gdzieś oddali czy słychać. Na jakichś dźwigniach, na jakichś czymś. Mhm. Ja tak pod stopami, taki jakby taka... Przepaść była pod nogami moimi, ja tak czuję. Pod tym adresem można odbyć własne wędrówki dźwiękowe. Dziękuję za uwagę i zapraszam do zadawania pytań.
Dzień dobry, nazywam się Natalia Dzieduszycka, jestem dyrektorką TR Warszawa. Dzisiaj wspólnie z Agatą opowiemy Państwu, co się w naszym teatrze działo w trakcie lockdownu. Decyzja o zamknięciu teatrów została na chwilę po premierze spektaklu Wracać wciąż do domu. Wiedząc, że od jutra nasze sceny będą zamknięte, spontanicznie pojechaliśmy całym zespołem na ostatni spektakl w secie innych ludzi do ATM Studio. Następnego dnia pracowaliśmy już zdalnie, ustalając grafik obecności, kontaktując się z naszą publicznością w celu zwrócenia biletów po odwołanych spektaklach. Zabezpieczaliśmy wszystkie działania w teatrze, ale naprawdę nie wiedzieliśmy, jak długo to wszystko potrwa. No, ale od pierwszych dni właściwie wiedzieliśmy, że w centrum naszej troski będzie utrzymanie kontaktu z naszą publicznością oraz zadbanie, za naszych, zadbanie o naszych artystów i twórców, za których jak każda instytucja kultury jesteśmy bardzo odpowiedzialni. Kiedy wszechobecny stał się hashtag stay at home, wpadliśmy na pomysł, by zaangażować się w motywowanie publiczności do samoizolacji. A sposób, który wybraliśmy, to było to najlepsze, co posiadamy w naszym, w naszym teatrze, nasze spektakle. Zdecydowaliśmy się, że pod hasłem Zostań w domu, nie wychodź z teatru 21 marca puściliśmy nasz właściwie jeden z ważniejszych spektakli, Cząstki kobiety. To jest spektakl, który w poprzednim roku dostał Grand Prix na festiwalu Boska Komedia i właśnie miał zacząć swoje międzynarodowe tournée. Trzy miesiące trwa festiwal TR Warszawa na ekranach telewizorów i komputerów. 15 spektakli z 20 lat działalności zespołu TR Warszawa, liczne spotkania z twórcami, naszej najbardziej twórcami naszych najbardziej rozpoznawalnych tytułów i równolegle prezentacja debiutów. Wszystko to zaowocowało bardzo ważnym dla nas wyróżnieniem. W ramach plebiscytu Kultura w czasie pandemii TR Warszawa został wskazany przez respondentki i respondentów jako instytucja przodująca w dziedzinie online w czasie lockdownu. Jesteśmy bardzo wdzięczni za to wyróżnienie naszej publiczności. Pracowaliśmy dwutorowo. Z jednej strony ten cotygodniowy kontakt, ta cotygodniowa praca na archiwach, a z drugiej strony performance trwa, czyli podtrzymanie aktywności artystycznej i utrzymanie naszych produkcji, które planowaliśmy na tę wiosnę w wigorze i w artystycznej pracy. Szukaliśmy dla nich najbardziej odpowiednich form dotarcia do publiczności, takich, które byłyby oryginalne, wciągające, takie, które bez internetu nie mogłyby się obyć. Takim projektem jest Trip Core. Jest to internetowy prequel do spektaklu Stream w reżyserii Katarzyny Minkowskiej i Tomka Walesiaka. Jest to internetowe laboratorium rozwoju postaci na oczach widzów. Aktorzy przez kilka tygodni pracowali wraz z reżyserką i dramaturgiem nad swoimi profilami na Facebooku, Instagramie, na YouTubie. Wchodzili tam między sobą w interakcje, przedstawiali się sobie, wchodzili w życiowe relacje, tak jak kojarzymy to w różnych internetowych streamach po to, by prezentować się publiczności przed tym, kiedy spotkamy się z nimi na scenie. Ripcore to praca, która nie mogłaby powstać bez sieci. Pracowaliśmy również nad estetykami cyfrowymi. Można tutaj przywołać chociażby klip Kore, jednej z bohaterek spektaklu, o który teraz poproszę. Każdy z internetowych projektów miał swoją estetykę i bardzo indywidualną, dopracowaną odsłonę. Podobnie było z Marią Klassenberg, z pracą dedykowaną artystce, dla której i której biografią pracuje Katarzyna Kalwat. Kiedy okazało się, że premiera jej spektaklu nie odbędzie się w Volksbühne w Berlinie w maju, wraz z partnerami zorganizowaliśmy partycypacyjny performance w ramach internetowego festiwalu, w ramach którego bazując na tych formatach, które znamy na zajęciach jogi czy pilatesu online na Zoomie, na wspólnym byciu razem w internecie, zorganizowaliśmy performance inspirowany twórczością i poglądami Marii Klassenberg, artystki, której wystawę monograficzną w połowie listopada 
zobaczymy w Galerii Raster. To były te działania stricte artystyczne, ale naszym przyświecającym hasłem było jesteśmy z wami. Był ciągły kontakt z widzami w jak najbardziej bezpośredniej formie, dlatego też działania edukacyjne przenieśliśmy i ciągle zostawiliśmy w sieci. Są to warsztaty otwarte, są to webinary, są to różnego typu konsultacje, które się odbywają, ale rozwijaliśmy też projekty artystyczne, projekty z młodymi twórczyniami, z którymi pracował Wojtek Ziemilski. W czerwcu zobaczyliśmy wystawę Gdzie Jesteście, internetową wystawę opartą na pracach młodych twórczyń, pracach wideo, wideoartach realizowanych prosto z serca. Reorganizacja pracy naszego teatru ale też niezwykle pozytywne sygnały od naszych widzów z całego świata właściwie nas mobilizowały do tego, aby zbudować program Buduj z nami teatr online. Partnerska komunikacja z naszą publicznością była dla nas bardzo ważna. Chcieliśmy nawzajem się wspierać, a nasza publiczność wsparła nas darowiznami w kwocie prawie 30 tysięcy złotych. Ale nie to jest najważniejsze. W czasie tego lockdownu nasze spektakle, nasze spotkania, nasze warsztaty obejrzało ponad 50 tysięcy widzów, które, którzy zostali razem z nami. Dlatego od tego sezonu zdecydowaliśmy, że ruszamy z platformą streamingową, gdzie będziemy pokazywać nasze spektakle na żywo. W opcji VOD będziemy prezentować profesjonalnie nagrane spektakle, które już nie będą dostępne na naszej scenie. Bardzo liczymy, że zostaniecie razem z nami i będziecie nas wspierać w rozwoju tejże platformy, która stała się czwartym filarem naszej strategii teatralnej. Zapraszam serdecznie do zadawania pytań. Cześć, nazywam się Rafał Zapała, jestem kompozytorem, zajmuję się też sound artem i o jednej z takich moich prac, która jest w części kompozycją współczesną, a w części pracą sound artową właśnie chciałem, chciałem opowiedzieć. Jej tytuł to Scrolling to Zero. Centralną kategorią tej pracy, centralne kategorie tej pracy określiłbym jako, jako zmianę, jako y, utratę, jako koniec. Y, oczywi oczywiste jest to, że żyjemy w stanie permanentnej zmiany dzisiaj i y, problem jest taki, że, y, że strumień zmian, który nas dotyczy i nas otacza jest tak szybki, że nie jesteśmy w stanie go za, zaadoptować w zasadzie, nie jesteśmy w stanie się przyzwyczaić do niego po prostu. Sytuacja ta generuje oczywiście ogromną ilość lęków zarówno na poziomie indywidualnym, jak i na poziomie społecznym, a jednym z, ze skutków takiego lęku jest właśnie to dotkliwe poczucie straty, dotkliwe poczucie końca, albo może lepiej powiedzieć y, poczucie wielu strat i wielu końców. It's the end. And the end. And finally the end. Ta społeczna trauma zmiany straty i końca jest przeżywana przez nas być może nawet bardziej dotkliwie z tego powodu, że nie jesteśmy pewni, czy mamy przed sobą jeszcze jakąkolwiek przyszłość jako, jako, jako ludzkość. Więc w zasadzie dobrze znamy te futurologiczne scenariusze, które oferuje nam nauka, oferują nam futur futurolodzy właśnie, czy artyści. Z niepokojem też obserwujemy, jak jak te scenariusze się powoli realizują. W związku z tym pojawiła się, pojawił się taki pogląd o przyszłości, która nadeszła już, którą już znamy i możemy tylko obserwować to, jak ona się, jak ona się dzień po dniu dopełnia, jak się realizuje lub może lepiej powiedzieć, jak się renderuje albo ściąga na dysk. 
Evaporating. Evaporating. Evap or leaking. Downloading bite by bite. Rendering breath by breath. Widzimy też jak lęk spowodowany zmianą, stratą i końcem generuje cały wachlarz reakcji społecznych, typowych reakcji społecznych, reakcji typu mechanizmy obronne. I obserwujemy, yy, najbardziej popularne z nich to zaprzeczanie tym zmianom i wyparcie tych zmian, więc yy, yy, widzimy całe grupy społeczne, które, yy, które odwracają się w kierunku yy, retro utopii, tak zwanych wartości tradycyjnych. Widzimy też całe grupy społeczne, które odwracają oczy od zmian i, i stają po stronie denialistów klimatycznych na przykład. Więc jedni z nas wolą tych zmian po prostu nie dostrzegać, a dla innych odliczanie do zera już się rozpoczęło. Performance. Just stay relaxed and focused. Don't care about time. Just listen. Sing sound of the end. Lasting three breaths. Counting to zero. Praca scrolling to zero ma na celu oswajanie właśnie tych lęków. Jest ona zbiorową medytacją dźwiękową na organy, elektronikę i interaktywny udział publiczności, na głosy publiczności. Jest też, lubię o niej też myśleć jako takim brzmieniowym rytuale, który jest prowadzony przez cyfrowego awatara, który w czasie trwania pracy próbuje zachęcić nas do wspólnego intonowania jednego dźwięku, dźwięku angielskiego słowa koniec, czyli end. Ja świadomie w tej pracy starałem się przejąć i przetworzyć narzędzia pracy terapeutycznej, narzędzia medytacyjne, narzędzia deep listening, czyli głębokiego słuchania, techniki oddechowe w celu zbudowania takiego, takiego bardzo fizycznego organicznego doświadczenia y, zgody, akceptacji, może rezygnacji. This is the human organ and the mechanical organ. We are organized organs, an organism. Jak każdy rytuał, ta praca ma działać zarówno na poziomie wewnętrznym, intymnym, personalnym, jak i na takim poziomie społecznym, komunalnym, zbiorowym. Wspólne intonowanie jednego dźwięku jest przede wszystkim doświadczeniem fizycznym. Po pierwsze czujemy dźwięk wewnątrz ciała, czujemy jego, jego, jego wibracje wewnątrz, czujemy napędzamy go swoim oddechem. Z czasem też zaczynamy słyszeć ten dźwięk, zaczynamy słyszeć, jak miesza się on z dźwiękami, z głosami naszych sąsiadów obok. Słyszymy, jak ten dźwięk wtapia się w pogłos pomieszczenia, w którym, w którym to się wszystko odbywa i jak jest dopalane i napędzane brzmieniem, potężnym już wtedy brzmieniem organów i brzmieniem i brzmieniem otaczającej nas elektroniki. Więc wspólnie, wspólnie tworzymy jeden wielki, potężny dron, potężny, potężny dźwięk. I celem takiego, tak, takiego działania jest właśnie próba rozsmakowania się w tej sytuacji, próba zaakceptowania jej. Wszystko to się odbywa bez dramatu, wszystko to się odbywa w raczej, w raczej takim 
dominuje raczej nastrój melancholii i, i, i akceptacji, tak jak powiedziałem, rezygnacji być może. Quite comfortable to observe this process and wait. It's quite nice and pleasant. No drama in it. It's just melodic, melancholic and mad. No drama, just no future. Just chilling and listening. It's easy. Easy listening. Praca Scrolling to Zero, Scrolling to Zero powstała w, w kilku wersjach, może być wykonywana w kilku wersjach. Początkowo została stworzona jako utwór muzyki współczesnej, przeznaczony na organy, na elektronikę i głosy publiczności. Jest to utwór przeznaczony do wykonywania w przestrzeniach sakralnych, w kościołach. To jest istotne w, w pierwszej wersji tej pracy. Powstała następnie też wersja bardziej standardowa, bardziej kameralna, w której elektronika i, i wideo jest po prostu odtwarzane, prezentowane. Natomiast większy nacisk jest położony na, na tą interakcję publiczności, na rytualny charakter całej tej sytuacji. I w czasie pandemii covidowej powstała też wersja internetowa, która umożliwia stworzenie takich mikro domowych rytuałów słuchając tej pracy samodzielnie lub w małych grupach. I na zakończenie chciałem powiedzieć jeszcze, że scrolling to zero jest często interpretowana w kategoriach katastrofy klimatycznej. Ja myślę o niej trochę szerzej jednak. Myślę o niej jako o utworze, o, o wszelkiego rodzaju indywidualnych i społecznych zmian, zmianach, lękach wobec zmian, wobec strat i wobec osobistych końców różnych. Dziękuję za uwagę i zapraszam do zadawania pytań. Hi, my name is Szymon Kaliski and I'm going to talk about Fab Fungus work we made together with Marek Staszak and Ankarzy Zup. So this is a joint project of a couple of people, so keep in mind that I'm going to talk about Mark's perspectives on this. And also I'm not going to talk so much about what the work is, but how it came to be. So I wanted to start by talking about language. And I'm not talking about language as a way of communicating right now, or as a programming language, but language as a tool for thinking, a way we can shape the things we do and how we act. This brings me quite nicely to this famous quote from Ludwig Wittgenstein. The limits of my language are the limits of my world. There's this in interesting linguistic determinism hypothesis proposed by Safi Worf. By now it was mostly disproven, but in its original strong form says that you cannot th think things for which you have no words. As in, the language we possess limits what we can do. And this is super interesting when, looked, uh, when, when we look through this at programming languages. They can be kind of easily created ad hoc for a specific thing. And by that, they limit what we can do and what we create. And there's also another way to look at it. Um, this is a quote from Marshall McLuhan. First we build the tools and then they build us. As in, the things we create limit what we can do and also shape what we can do. And for me, this is all very inspiring, especially in the domain of software. And also, if looked at through the lens of cybernetic and self-cybernetic system, the feedback loops happening within it. So I've been exploring a couple of ideas around self-cybernetic systems, a systems in which you track yourself and then show that data back to yourself to shape your behavior. I have one tool, which is a time tracking um, thing that I basically track how I spend my days and what I work on. 
and then by visualizing that data back to myself, I can shape my behavior. Another one is a way I store and connect my ideas and notes, and this allows me basically to think things for which I wouldn't have space in my head otherwise. So hopefully all of that gives a bit of a broader context around the Fungus work. So this is how it worked. This is how it looked like when it was exhibited for the first time at Posthuman Data Exhibition in Poznan. But the work on Fab Fungus started a couple of years back. At some point, I got really interested in biological growth, both the aesthetics of the form that grows out and also the algorithm of cell division. And what you can see here is a couple of early experiments around these ideas, where I was trying to both figure out how to simulate that in the computer and also how to create the forms I was thinking about. And as you can probably tell by now, I'm very interested in the medium itself, the dynamic computational medium, which allows, especially when we think of it as a way of, of expressing ourselves. What you can see here is a, uh, another experiment I worked on when I was exploring a couple of intuitions around that medium. And when I combined it with the earlier experiments with growth and, and biology, Fab Fungus came to be. It's basically this, this frozen place in time where a couple of idea vectors collided to create this artwork. And work on such a piece is, is quite chaotic. And there's a bunch of mediating happening with the medium itself. For us, it was larger than usual 3D printing, which introduces its own kind of brokenness and imperfections. And for me, I think of it as another collaborator in that piece. So in the end, Fab Fungus to me is kind of like a side effect of a longer term, probably lifelong research into the computational medium. And hopefully for me also, it's a step in so-called bootstrapping process, a term coined by Douglas Engelbart. It's a process in which we build tools to be able to build better tools, to be able to build better tools. Thanks for your attention, and I invite you to ask questions at the Q&A session. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this fourth session of uh, Best of Poland Forum, which is part of the Digital Cultures Festival, Imagine Futures, organized by the Adam Mickiewicz Institute, which is still on till tomorrow, October 25th. And we have a very intense weekend with a lot of exciting guests and talks and workshops. Today, I would like to welcome all our guests, uh, including Agata Ruchlewicz-Dzianach and Łukasz Dzianach from Miastofon, Rafał Zapała from Scrolling to Zero, Szymon Kaliski from Fab Fungus, uh, and Agata Kowacz and Natalia Dzieduszycka from TR Warszawa. Hello, everyone. Hello. Also, I would like to welcome hi all our audi uh, online audiences, uh, whom I uh, very strongly uh, recommend to join the discussion. It's a very unique way, uh, or uh, occasion to ask questions uh, to our um, speakers today. So if you'd like to do so, the best option is to go to the website digitalcultures.pl, find this event, and then click on the join zoom button which will redirect you to a webinar where you can both comment but also if you feel like joining us uh, with a more uh, real though still virtual presence you can also be on camera uh, to uh, uh, voice your opinion in the discussion so hi everyone so thrilled to have you here uh, today with us uh, I'm super Hi. excited about 
session. Hi, uh, and having all of you here. So um, I would like to talk a bit more about the the project that you've presented, uh, which are part of the of this uh, most important things happening uh, uh, in Poland and uh, our curatorial choice. I would I should say uh, of some things which are happening in the digital culture, uh, digital cultures. And I would like to start by uh, this uh, the shift that we've all experienced during the past months and this new dimensions that have, have appeared uh, with the pandemic. And I think it would be great to start with theater because unlike books, or uh, films that were easily translatable or uh, uh, could be adapted in uh, different places and uh, uh, could be uh, could have been seen around the world. Theater was always something which is uh, more uh, difficult to distribute. Yet now with the pandemic, there are new ways of uh, building online presences. Uh, so I would really like to start this discussion with TR um, TR. Uh, to tell us a bit more about a uh, way of uh, experiencing maybe also asynchronically uh, theater online, if you could develop a bit more on this, uh, the thought of this project. Thanks for your invitation. It's incredible. Uh, it's incredible that we can discuss this, what theater means in the digital era. Being here, like online, with wish the effects that. Uh, on the super and film uh, games. When it comes to the experience of Warszawa, I think we can uh, say it's for most uh, successful about the gathering people and some time on it. So we have started this run stay at home theater with uh, like a regular program of things of videos plus uh, Q and A's with this in the of the project. So really important to us to discuss the or how this. So that's why lighting uh, audience as possible, taking generations that. Can, uh, Facebook or other, or other. That was super important to us to meet them every day. Are there and they have planned, they are treating going to the theater as going to the theater, like a parallel approach uh, to the. Uh, uh, we were developing as well the projects to work from and this, how do we behave there? And heard of that we are really proud of. Uh, I was in the uh, project me and doing during our presentations. I would love to develop the important to that. Like some of the uh, commissions called had to the paper and the topic will be uh, the contemporary in the generation of those digital natives with uh, they would have in between them where relations are changing. Mm -hmm. We knew that we have this dimension in role, maybe not as uh, in the internet. We know that uh, leading our media channels is a little bit thing. So this is from where the, of creating Rip Chorus, the prequel, where the artists uh, the, who were working actors invited the characters where the uh, uh, I think we have some technical issues with you, so <laughs> I thought I will let you know. Um, is there a chance you could log in and log out again? Because I think with, I, I don't know if it's just me, but uh, if you could just uh, take this moment, sorry to interrupt you, but I thought maybe uh, it would get better uh, with the, within the moment, but it didn't. So if you could just please uh, log in and out, and uh, while we wait you to come back, maybe I will just, um, well, I will just take this uh, to the next speaker and who will get back uh, at Verapicor uh, later on. 
and maybe we could go right uh, right right uh, to uh, Rafael and we we're talking a bit about uh, the way um, we we're talking about theater and Agatha was telling us uh, as more about this uh, online presence but actually your your project in some ways is quite uh, similar it was intended as a physical project and then uh, it 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 gained another um, physicality uh, in the last months, uh, which is kind of a ritualized uh, physicality yet online, right? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, the project was created firstly uh, not as an internet project. It was rather, uh, it was just regular concert in the, in the churches or in some uh, sacral spaces. But uh, pandemic makes it, uh, uh, makes it virtual uh, in this meaning that I try that I was trying to create as you said uh, like int internet ritual and you know there's a question uh, how to do it and how to um, how to treat the spectator in uh, in in uh, this type of experience uh, and I think that many 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 strategies could be uh, could could work here, but my strategy as a musician and and as a composer is mainly uh, a strategy to not treat the spectator as a consumer, as a just passive observer, you know. So and I think that the main problem of internet media. Uh, that we really need to uh, mm, try to engage the, 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 the audience, the spectator, as I said. So, uh, and, and again, many strategies can be used here, but, 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 but my, my, my idea was to ask the, 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 the listener or the uh, observer, the, 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 the spectator to um, to do something with uh, his or her body during uh, during observing uh, my piece, uh, the piece is mainly a meditation session, something like this. So uh, meditation is, is always working with uh, his or her body. So 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 mm -hmm. uh, it worked quite. It could work quite well. That was my 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 my, my idea. So uh, when okay. you listen, yeah, when you listen to the piece, you 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 can just deal with your body, and in this in this in this uh, sense, uh, it is interactive. Okay, um, uh, I think this, you know, uh, is Agata back with us? Hey, Agata, are you back? No, I think it's a virtual <laughs> on a virtual screen. Uh, so we'll wait a moment, uh, <laughs> a moment more. I can recommend maybe, that this occasion. Maybe we can, to hear. Every... Maybe we can hear her. I got the, can, can uh, you hear it? No, I think I think she's I think she's uh, no. gone for a minute. But I can recommend to all of you. We had a very good talk uh, centered around the film A Year of the Robot, and I think it's still on. The film is available still on on the Digital Cultures platform, and it was a talk with Alexandra Przegalinska, who is a philosopher of AI. And part of it was about this online presence and about this creepiness of online avatars. So I could totally redirect you to this. And meanwhile, coming back to our conversation, maybe we could talk a little bit more about Miastofon because the project, um, uh, your project, Rafael, uh, it, requ it requires some, uh, some materialization, some space. But I think Miastofon is a project which requires a lot of attention. And it's something which we are not yeah used to audio attention on the web while we are just scrolling through our uh, face uh, to our timelines on uh, on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram and then suddenly there's a project which is meditative and which is sort of the slow web 
there used to be this concept, uh, the sticker at the International Documentary Film Festival in Amsterdam saying switch all uh, uh, notifications and get yourself a glass of wine and just lounge on the, on the couch and just immerse yourself in this project. And this is sort of this project. So how does this work? How do you, how do you manage to have people find the, the space to, um, to be able to enjoy the project in a proper way, uh, how did you how did you try to design this experience? Do you try to design this experience? How do you deal with that? So uh, Agatha and Lukash. Uh, well, yes, I um, I could say that uh, one one way we uh, we modeled this would be this uh, even you could say the ritual aspect of the of the of the experience uh, that uh, the user has when um, when uh, when when starts uh, interacting with uh, with Miastov uh, on online acoustic map so um, you could even compare it to a um, uh, to a rite of uh, passage in a sense that you you you, you can you can you can say it's a kind of passage, kind of uh, transition between um, general audience worlds, uh, world like uh, sighted people uh, world and uh, blind people world, because um, uh, you kind of symbolically move uh, to a blind people world um, when you when you um, interact with just yes, often. So. Um, um i think that the, the first shocking experience we 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 we, uh, we wanted it to be like that that um when you open them up you just lose all the visual aspects of uh of of uh, of your um, browser so you you see just a black screen and uh, there is the most shocking thing is that you also can't see the cursor and you don't know how to control the cursor so you kind of uh, you're kind of uh, feel that you are deprived of the of the control and deprived of the sense of of the visual sense so this is kind of uh, cutting away cutting away from from your um, sighted um, experience and then you slowly, you know, you slowly um, start to understand, to learn how to navigate without without seeing anything. You, you you start to be able to navigate through this acoustic world, and then you know this this incorporation happens, uh, which is uh, well, I hope rewarding for the for the user in a sense that you can experience these uh, soundscapes and you can. Uh, experience these um, insights, these conversations of uh, of the of the people who took part in in the project. So, um, yeah, I, I would say this 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 would be it about that. Uh, yeah, that we have these three phases. That uh, the first one is the the disconnecting of the sense of sight. Then you have this uh, phase in the middle to, to adapt to a new environment. And then uh, the last one that you have that, uh, let's say, hour, kind of hour, that you have this uh, phase of exploration with, uh, with a pleasure, we hope. <laughs> Yeah, I had a lot of pleasure uh, with this project and uh, I'm really happy that we're showing this. And meanwhile, Agatha is back with us uh, this time as not only Hello again. Again. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> all the springtime. Yeah. <laughs> all the springtime lockdown was completely successful with my home Wi-Fi. It's really the moment when you try to celebrate it when us in the theater, we have these green performances, which are the, let's say, one before uh, one before the last one, and then some technical issues happen. So hello again. I don't know actually where my speech was interrupted, so I will just say that we have built as well the projects that were based on freedom of how do you discover it and how do you go deeply into uh, the persona, the characters created by the director, the dramaturg and the actors. And uh, Cora and Narcissus have their uh, 
Facebook and Instagram profiles open and still active. You can uh, go and see them on Instagram. You can check uh, how do they behave, what are their interests, uh, what were the basis of their story. And even from my perspective, uh, so a girl who was involved in the development of the project, when I was uh, discovering the stories of them and uh, seeing what do they produce and present on the internet profile, I was really unsure if they are real or if they are the characters. So we still know that this is uh, how people believe in the characters that then they meet on stage. Uh, this project is absolutely seen as the map, as the network. So uh, you can see there uh, plenty of the content created by the uh, current nurses. You can see songs, they fought, some ideas, photos, how do they capture this, the reality and the world. And you can discover it at the moment when you want. Of course, uh, we have planned as well the moments that were, uh, let's say, performances from our point of view. So the common streams after the several commentaries uh, exchanged that was uh, absolutely transparent as the comment on Instagram in between the characters so people could as well be gathered on Thursday evening and check how do they uh, plan now their common uh, performances as we, as we do now during this uh, uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, so that was something for us. So this performance was a map, was a network, still is and it's open and, and I, I know that many of people who decided to join us for the premiere uh, set of uh, stream by Katarzyna Minkowska were as well using this uh, profiles as kind of introduction um, like program of the performance and we still keep the profiles active. It's not so often as it, as it was during the springtime, but uh, during all the performances, you can get some new content uh, about how the story is being developed or repeated, because actually this is how stream is uh, constructed. So I do believe that uh, still at the moment when we felt so much isolated and lonely, the moments when we could gather and experience something together, at the same time and comment on it as the commentary of the stream was really something but as well this ability and this flexibility of creating the works that just don't use it as the basic condition uh, are much more inviting has their own uh, audiences who are joining us still now because there was no like opening and ending moment of the project Uh, we, during the last months and really enjoying the fact that we are based in different places but still we can um, our paths can intersect online it's something which is very uh, powerful we were just joking Agatha when you were gone about the fact that you're kind of this virtual being but not virtual whether you are with us in presence or not and actually this uh, session this part of the festival the last part of our festival is called human non-human and this tension between the things, things which are human and non-human, real and unreal, are also part of your practice, Shimon, right? And something that you have been exploring uh, a lot. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us yeah, a bit more I, about I, Sure, of course. I don't think I, I really got a chance to talk about this uh, during the talk, so it's a really like timely question. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's going to be more about like asking questions than answering them. But, but to me, the way we think about most things, as in like what is alive, is, 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 is kind of this issue of taxonomies. I mean, like if you imagine that every process in a cell could be simulated in software, then is that simulated cell like quote unquote alive? Like where do we draw the line and how do you think about this? And I think, uh, I think it has real impact into our day to day life as, 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 as we can see as well. Um, one story I can I can bring here, super short one is is at some point I was I was very really interested in, in in figuring out or like simulating how how ants create their their paths and how they go around the world and bring back stuff to the ant colony and and there's a very simple process uh, that you can follow about that where like just you know a point on the screen walks around and leaves a tray behind it that is so pheromones and then other other Mm, other ants can feel it and, and walk through it and, and the more the, the path is, is being walked the more pheromones there are and the more ants go there um, 
and and the pheromones over time also disintegrate as in the, like dis disappear from the environment so at some point when i was working on this i had this issue that um, some of the path uh, was was disappearing and then the ant would randomly try to walk back home and find the end of that path and start basically walking in the circle and any every, every time the circle was made there was more pheromones on that path so the ant kept on walking until it died and i was pretty sure at that point like i made something wrong in my in my simulation like there's a problem with the software but it turns out it's an actual thing that happens in the so-called real world so um that to me was like a, this one of these this, this breakthrough moments when i understood that by just very simple crude like caricature way of, of simulating the nature uh, we can understand something about it and, and and the limits between like what we call alive and what not um are very strange and i think more uh, telling about us down the reality mm -hmm. well we are we are having quite a few things in the program also relating to this and also we've had a, pro a program about plants uh, and we had an amazing talk with uh, monica galliano and uh, may abdala about how do we communicate with plants and about the plant that plants are as sentient as uh, animals for instance in some regards so i totally recommend all of you to retrace this part of the program and uh yeah well this section is called this part of the festival is called human and human this 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 event is called best of poland but the theme of this year's festival is imagined futures and i was thinking what sorts of futures can we imagine uh, for uh, the cultural and the arts industries, given that we're living in these times of uncertain, uncertainty being the only certain thing? And as uh, Julia Kaganski said in her opening keynote of this year's festival, change is the only constant. So, uh, Natalia, how do you run a cultural institution in this context? And how do you envision the future of culture and of the arts uh what do you think is uh what's the imagined future for uh for us i think it's a very serious question uh, <laughs> the lockdown in springtime uh has provided that uh, the role of the cultural institution is very important uh, the contact with both artists and institution is much more direct than in the big institution of the national level they can react uh, much faster in a way more adapted to the needs of their environment. Uh, during the springtime, we have seen many of the institutions that were really well organized with their work, uh, proposing interesting programs and solutions that make both life of artists and the contact uh, with the audience. audience really needs the culture. That's why we are very happy that in the contrary of the lockdown in spring, now in Poland and in the most of European countries, the theatres stay open and uh, even uh, with the limited audience capacity. Uh, that's why we need to be flexible to match our programming with the online uh, playground. I think that art institutions should learn how to change because uh, the flexibility and the openness to the give new uh, direction of uh, their way of work uh, is only way to keep the community of audience and artists alive. Uh, they need to change to respond uh, to the way uh, of how the audience is open to receive their program and that it's more important to be able to create their interest in uh, and stay loyal to their core mission. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, I think it's a very important point you're raising about the mission of culture and about the social educational uh, mission that we all have. And on the one hand, there's uh, big institutions such as TR, but on the other, there's also um, creators or groups, informal groups, such as uh, that that lead to pro to the to the um, to the conception and to the production of projects, such as Niastafan, which I think is a great example of a project that creates a more uh, um, open future. And uh, we have a question incoming from uh, incoming question from the audience. 
Uh, to you guys, uh, Wukash and Agata, in what ways can uh, Pavel is, as, uh, is asking, uh, in what ways can the experiences of designing apps for the blind help in enriching apps for mainstream audiences? So uh, how can this designing for uh, for like a small group or also um, taking into account uh, this very unique uh, perspective that blind people are bringing? How can this impact more uh, mainstream mainstream projects? And what what uh, what takeaways in terms of design maybe you, you, or, or or insights you gather during this uh, the working on this project? Uh, well, in a, in a sense, Miastaphon is not um, is not designed for um, blind people. It's rather that uh, it is designed from for the uh, wider audience uh, based on the experiences and uh, points of view and um, uh, working with. Uh, with blind people, so um, I think it, it 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 its purpose itself is to um, is to um, give this possibility to to the wider audience to to experience this um, this uh, different point uh, this different point of view. Yeah, it shows uh, like different waves of reading the city and experience the city and somehow encourage to explore it to, with a greater awareness conscious and um, we want from our part at uh, our contribution to building um, a sensitive relationship between uh, people and a space um, which seems to be more and more uh, important uh, each year now in the context, for example, of uh, environmental crisis. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think. Also uh, please, please go ahead. Yeah, and I think also this is worth to note that this um, uh, this method itself, I mean, the, using only one sense, only the, the acoustic is. Uh, it's interesting how it uh, affects the user's attention and uh, because in fact Miastophone is not about blind people it's about the part of the city and uh, the, the problems of this part of the city and uh, the, the experience of this part of the city and um, is you could you could take a take a more more abstract look at this project as uh, uh, that that the the, the, the mm, using the acoustic layer is just a just a just a method for uh, for this project in fact we as as a group of punkt in group punkt we made uh, we, we've made a couple of uh, of this kind of subjective uh, mapping projects and um, this is the the only one that is uh, that is uh, about soundscape about because soundscape, mainly yeah. we we focus on uh, immaterial city layers but also for example on a um, memory escape memory layer so it's uh, the uh, other um other way of uh, of uh, looking on a on a cityscape but like uh, ch choosing uh, choosing one of the layer i really like so, this so. in your project i really liked it that uh, it's um it's multi-dimensional one would think okay it's just audio but there's a lot of dimensions to this and i also like the dimension which is the social uh, not the inclusivity dimension i mean there's a dimension of inclusivity of us people who may not really focus on the world world without uh vision it kind of includes us in this other universe that we can create but also i really like um your the method uh, that you have when you, when you're working on this project um, like this uh, how how much energy you put into all this participate the, the, the participatory uh, elements of the experience and if there's any futures I would imagine I would totally imagine futures which are inclusive and participatory and I would like to get back uh, for a minute to Rafael because your project is participatory 
participatory in some way. And also it's a project which is about ends and uh, beginnings. So if we're talking about image and futures, there's also this notion of the circle of time. Uh, so uh, I was wondering, uh, what are these potential, there's this end, but do, do you see like a potential, like maybe to, we will have to finish in a few minutes, but maybe just to that this positive note, do you see any new, any new beginnings from working on any project about new beginnings or, uh, yeah, in this circle of... Um... Yes, everyone wants to hear something op op optimistic, <laughs> but... Uh... I think that I will stay on the radical position here uh, when talking about this piece. Maybe in other pieces the situation will be different. For sure it will be. But I really decided to devote this piece to, to, the, to, to this uh, pessimistic vision. Maybe not even vision because... So, so yeah, uh, putting this, uh, the, this piece in the context of, of, of uh, imagined features, Futures, uh, I think, doesn't make a lot of sense because it is, yeah, it is focused on the on this feeling of the end of this, uh, you know, of, of of this special moment. As I said on my uh, presentation, um, you know, it could be like private and like every day ends, and uh, and it could be like social ends also. I thought that uh, yeah this uh, I thought that it it is really uh, maybe important or maybe uh, making us free a little bit to to imagine this 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 time this moment or this feeling or this state on the other hand. Uh, my wife is psychologist and she's mm -hmm. uh, very often using this type of techniques like psychological techniques to um, uh, to pass uh, some uh, some traumas or some really uh, difficult experience like grief experiences and uh, they are using this type of uh, of rituals actually this the, 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 these types of uh, of tools so i imagine that that art could be that such could, could make such kind of ritual or so, so such kind of of tool so i will not going to say some uh, uh, nothing optimistic here <laughs> 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 so talking about art as tool and also physicality, uh, maybe I could go back uh, just for a second to you, uh, Shimon. I, I'm really interested in this idea of, 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 of adding a materiality both to algorithms, but also to this idea of time tracking and of um, adding, uh, yeah, just uh, <laughs> tangible, <laughs> tangible things such as notes to time, which seems to be kind of intangible. Uh, so could you just tell us a few more things about this how does this practice change also given that we've lived in the magma of time during the pandemic so uh... yeah i'm conscious conscious of our time so i will try to keep it brief but <laughs> like i've been i've been <laughs> fascinated by how um our, our thinking and behavior it can be kind of shaped by uh, how we how we show it to ourselves so, so with my the time tracking and lately my, my also like the thinking practice of, of sorts, uh, the idea of, of, of visualization of, of showing me the data I, I track about myself and and through and, and basically like molding the lines through which I want to look at my life and, and what I do, that's been really impactful. And, and there's there, there, there are these old, old ideas from, from cybernetic systems where, where the feedback comes into the system and you kind of look at it while being inside of it. And, and I think like when applied to yourself, it's also super interesting. I'm not sure if I have any anything uh, uh, really like uh, breathtaking to talk about here, but, but I've been fascinated by, for example, writing as, uh, as a tool and as a tool for basically like sharing ideas both in space and in time and then longer than a single human is alive. And that's been, I think, like one of the biggest things we've made as, 
as humans and and just like trying to piggyback on this a little bit and and and, and having my thinking in writing so i can come back to it and and, and basically build up on it over time um has been a huge change in in, in, in how i you know do stuff <laughs> i'm not sure that answers much of your question but yeah i, I think um, writing is a very powerful tool and i would totally agree yeah. with, agree with that and i think most of the time we're writing emails we're writing short messages we're writing at work but really writing as a creative practice or writing as a, a mindfulness practice is something which i personally find a great uh, tool and maybe for next year's conference we should think about a workshop it's being recorded so maybe you can go back to this and like this note to myself i'm noting it in front of this video saying maybe it's something that we should revisit for next year okay so to wrap up maybe this best of poland section maybe agatha just an last last note we're talking about the best of poland uh, it's a forum about of polish projects um so I guess many people may be wondering, uh, was this, is there something special about working in Poland or about the creative industries or, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, best of Poland, how, what does this even mean <laughs> from the perspective of you as a Polish cultural institution? It's a big question. Yeah, like, thank you so much for that. It's a challenge. So I hope that uh, my co-participants uh, will, will share some of my thoughts. Like, I think this, what is really specific about Poland is the moment that in the moment of the crisis, we are like really celebrating the meaning of community. And this is something which may work. This is the moment when we really know how to build smaller communities, to vote for something, to build special programs to support and to, I would say, like to see each other like more deeply, like uh, to trying to think how to uh, how to help to somebody or how to showcase their work in that sense. So uh, this way of uh, searching of the way of approach both like audiences, artists, uh, special programs for the development, searching for special talents within the people that you know from other sides of uh, uh, of their work, of their, let's say, every everyday job. Uh, that was something absolutely brilliant during this time, and I hope that uh, we will keep it as the positive thinking as the gathering. Uh, after this, like we are now at this moment when we like we feel that the second lockdown is somehow happening. We are super happy that not everything is being blocked and we do enjoy the fact that we still may work live and I hope it will it will stay but but we we know that we need to knowing how to adapt and I think from Polish history, we know that uh, modes of adaptation mo are bringing us those creative forces thanks to and thanks to those our work is often much more uh, relevant or like and often brilliant so i do hope that even if the times we live now are really challenging and forcing us to search for alternative uh, functions we will keep it as something which is inspiring and something which may bring to our work experience and like human experience something really important and that we will keep to this uh, what uh, what we should take care of like the nature culture uh, the thing that being together and being able to be together and being for each other is the most important thing not only for culture but for our human beings uh staying safe let's say and when it comes so. about polish we did so many programs so i hope we will just develop it and like take yeah. advantage of this what is possible but there was a there will it be trailer in a minute about the program of um i guess um, of the ministry, I oh, know. I think we saw it before of uh, other programs, also financing programs. Um, so I'm really inviting all the all the um, uh, all the creators to also check out the programs of the Ministry of uh, Culture. And uh, thank you so much, everyone, for contributing. And stay safe, and stay strong, and stay healthy. And I hope to see you around for the next sessions of the Digital Cultures festival ciao thank you so ciao. much bye. Bye. Thanks. Thanks a lot. bye bye everyone bye, bye.